hi guys welcome back so today's youtube video is going to be about common mistakes i've been there i made a lot of mistakes when i first started doing dip powder nails there's so many things that i did wrong and I want to show them to you guys and then show you how to fix them or prevent them so that you make sure you don't do the same mistakes that I did when I first started dipping. If you've been following along my beginner basic series, some of those mistakes and corrections have already been talked about. So flat nails, how not to flood your cuticles, making sure you get all the supplies before you even start. Those are going to be included in here, but they're not going to be as in-depth as those videos. So definitely check out the rest of the Beginner Basic series if you're interested in seeing other awesome techniques. So I don't want to hold you guys up any longer, so we're going to get right into the video. Buckle up nail queens, this is going to be a long and chatty video. Be sure to check the time codes below to skip to any tip that you want to see. When I first started doing dip powder nails, I didn't really understand all of the supplies that were required to do it because it's not just as simple as buying a starter kit from a company. The company's starter kits don't come with every single item you need to do your nails. You're going to need files, you're going to need buffing blocks, you're going to need rubbing alcohol, you're going to need a cuticle pusher, cuticle oils, a duster brush. Everything that I have here are just some of the bare essentials that I have discovered over time that everyone needs for their beginner starter kit. So if you guys want to watch a video on all of the supplies, I highly recommend you purchase before you sit down and do your first dip powder manicure. Definitely click the link I have here in the cards and go watch that video because every single item here I think is essential. Did you know that not all dip liquids are created equal? Yes, when I first started dipping, I used the same dip liquids from a company for about a year before I branched out. And then I realized that not all liquids are created equal and some are better than others. So definitely read the reviews for the company you're looking at purchasing because some are thinner, some are thicker, some just smell awful, some are better. And I think if you're just starting out, it's important to have liquids that don't glue shut and that are easy for beginners to use. One mistake that I made when I first started dipping was flooding my cuticles. What I mean is getting too much liquid on the cuticle area. So depending on the liquid you're using, some are runnier than others, which can definitely cause flooding. So I'm gonna use a liquid that really isn't runny here today, and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm able to flood the cuticles. So if you notice, I started at my cuticle and I worked my way down, but my brush is not touching my skin. So I'm just applying a nice, thinnish layer of liquid to my nails or what I think is thin and then I'm going to dip in my dip powder. You will notice as I take my nail out of the dip powder and you really focus on the cuticle area where the skin meets the nail that there is wet liquid there. That means my dip powder is touching my skin. So this is not a good thing. So I'm gonna take this tool right here and I'm gonna separate it from my skin to show you how much flooding actually occurred. And I didn't goop on the dip liquid, so it's not a thick layer. It's just I started my brush at the wrong area of the nail. I started it at the cuticle. So starting at the cuticle can cause flooding. So this is how I think you should fix it. I did a video on this, but I'm gonna recap it here. So I'm gonna use my favorite dip liquid here, which is Triple D, and I'm gonna show you guys what is important. First off, it's important to make sure that you wipe the brush on the inside of the bottleneck so that you get as much liquid off the brush as possible. So when it's coming in contact with your nail, it's not flooding it. Then I start my brush at the center of my nail, not at the cuticle, and I brush it down to the free edge, covering the entire bottom half, and then I fan my brush up towards the cuticle area, making sure not to touch my skin. 
So again, I think it's really important to wipe off as much liquid off your brush into the bottle as possible, and then also start the brush at the middle of the nail, not the cuticle area. Using a cuticle stick around your cuticles will definitely help prevent flooding as well. I am so guilty of making this mistake so many times when I first started out. I've done thick layers of dip liquid on my nail, and then when I go ahead and dip it in the dip powder, my dip powder is still wet because there's so much liquid on my nail. As for a second dip, this is really what I want the bulkness to be on a third dip. So for my second dip to already be like this, I'm I'm putting on too much liquid on my nail to be honest and I keep having to dip back in the jar so that the liquid absorbs the powder so that there's no more shine on the nail but it's taking me a couple attempts to get the shine completely off of my nail. So there's literally too much liquid on my nail and it already flooded my cuticle area and I had to wait a long time for this to dry before I could brush it off. And then you can tell there's so much liquid that I'm able to dent my nail. It's still soft. It should really be drying a lot faster than this, but because there's so much liquid, I'm able to dent it, and that's not a good thing. In order to show you how to fix this, I'm going to repeat something I did on the last step. So it's to wipe off the brush on the inside of your bottleneck before you put the liquid on your nail. And then start in the center of your nail and then wipe it down before you move up towards the cuticle area. Wiping the liquid on the inside of your bottleneck will make sure you take off the most excess amount of liquid off your brush. You do not want too much liquid on your brush. Also, some dip brands have thicker liquids than others, so definitely read the reviews of the brands you're looking into to make sure that they don't have reviews of being too thick. If you notice that your powder is still shiny and wet after that dip, keep dipping it back in the jar until the shine is completely gone. You wanna make sure all the liquid is absorbed by the dip powder. And if it's too thick, don't worry, you can file that away later. But you do not want a wet dip powder. If you are using a soft dusting brush to brush off your excess dip powder, I highly recommend you switch to a stiffer brush. There's several reasons why. One, it's so difficult to get off any excess dip powder in the nooks and crannies of your nails. The second reason is because if you have too much powder on your nail and you apply your base bond liquid on your nail again, that base bond liquid goes back into the bottle. So you're putting powder into your bottle, not directly, but through leaving too much powder on your nail. So I recommend taking a denser dusting brush. I use toothbrushes from the Dollar Tree, but you can actually get manicure brushes from the Dollar Tree or other nail stores as well. So don't worry, you don't have to use a toothbrush. I just personally like it. So you can see all the excess powder is gone. Using a brand new file can really hurt you if you don't prime your files. So if your file is too abrasive or it's just too new, it can hurt your sidewalls, your cuticle area, wherever you're filing that comes in contact with your skin. For me, oftentimes that is my cuticle area and my sidewalls. So what I'm going to teach you guys is how I prime my files, my brand new ones. So I grab a new file or a used file and I file the edges of the new file. So right where the edge would meet my skin right here, I file that so that it softens the edges. So when those edges come in contact with my skin, it's not tearing up my skin. So this is very important if you're using new files around your cuticle area. Make sure you prime them so that they're not damaging your skin. Have you ever applied your activator and you were impatient and filed, shaped, or buffed a little too quickly? 
I have, and it literally filed away chunks of my nails. If you don't give your activator enough time to do the chemical reaction that it needs to do with your dip base and your dip powder, then your dip powder is still going to be soft and you're going to file away chunks of the manicure you just worked so hard to do. So make sure you give it enough time before you start buffing. After you've given it enough time, I want to tell you, buff your heart out. So if your nail is completely rock solid, the activator has done its job, then it's time for you to start buffing. Oftentimes when we're doing our nails, it becomes lumpy or bumpy or the shape isn't there and you've basically lost hope like there's no salvaging this. Yes, there is. Buff your heart out. And what I mean is take your buffing block and just keep on buffing. Do note that some colors will lose pigment if you buff too much. So I recommend capping in clear dip powder if you've noticed that a pigmented color is starting to turn white after buffing a little too much. But I really do think you need to buff your heart out. Just keep buffing and buffing and buffing to get all those lumps out. So I've buffed on one side of my nail right here on the left and the right side is still lumpy. So you can see the difference between a smooth buffed nail and one that hasn't been buffed at all. Keep buffing, I promise it will look amazing when you're done. It takes me about a minute per nail to buff it completely smooth. It really depends if I have really lumpy nails that day because I applied too much base bond and too much liquid. But if I'm having a good day, it's usually about a minute a nail. So I've completely buffed this nail nice and smooth and this is what it looks like when it's completely finished. So this is a two-in-one. So one, I recommend that you encapsulate all of your glitters in clear dip powder because it's gonna make sure you don't buff away and tarnish the glitter and they're as shiny and beautiful as possible. But also I recommend if you have clear dip powder and white dip powder, that you double check which color you're picking up when you go to encapsulate. So I've opened two jars right now. Can you tell me which one is the white and which one is the clear? To the naked eye, white and clear in a jar look almost identical, and it's hard to tell it apart unless you know the difference in name. Revel Nail sells a clear called Vivian, and they sell a white called Veronica. While I don't have Veronica, I do have their color Illuminate, which is a white glow. So I'm going to flip these jars over and show you which is the white and which is the clear. The white is on the left and the clear is on the right, but they're White is also called Veronica. Why well, have two colors that look almost the same in the jar start with a V? And for my final mistake that I'm so guilty of doing is hardening my dip powder top coat. Every company has different instructions on how to apply their dip powder top coat, so definitely read their instructions before following it. I use Triple D liquids and her suggestions is to apply your activator layer, let it sit for two minutes, and then to wipe off the activator layer with rubbing alcohol and let that dry. Then you can apply your dip powder top coat. It is so important to follow the instructions because if you don't, you can harden your dip powder brush and ruin your liquid. So what I've done here is I didn't follow the instructions. I waited about 15 seconds after applying my activator and I applied my dip powder top coat. And the chemical reaction between the dip powder top coat and the activator cause the top coat to harden. That also causes your brush to harden. So I'm gonna show you guys my brush after I do this second layer of top coat and show you how it's starting to stiffen up. So the brush does not fan out as well as it did when I first used it. It is starting to stiffen up. Luckily, I don't have too much activator on the brush, but you can see here that it's not fanning out. So it's very, very important that you follow the dip powder instructions of that brand to a T. Another tip that I have when you're applying your dip powder top coat is to have either a lint-free wipe or a paper towel handy. I think that wiping your brush off between each layer of dip powder top coat is so important to prevent activator from getting inside of your bottle. If activator gets inside of your bottle, 
Then your dip liquid, your top coat liquid starts to thicken and it becomes unusable over time. So this part is really just handy for any brand that you're using. It doesn't matter what brand to prevent contamination of the activator getting inside of your top coat bottle. Welcome back. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. I hope it was helpful. If there's something that you feel like I missed, please let me know in the comments below because I'm sure that list of common mistakes goes on and on and on. But I wanted to talk about the ones that I found to be most common in the dip powder community and just tell those to you guys and really hit the nail on the head on those. So if you found this helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because I have another video coming. Bye!